What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Harry the Horse Barbecue. And today we are making some pastrami beef cheeks. We're gonna throw some beef cheeks in a pastrami brine, throw them on the smoker to build a beautiful pastrami crust, then confit them overnight in some beef tallow. Then we'll slice on in to reveal some amazing pastrami beef cheeks. Brisket is not the only thing you can pastrami. Let's get it. Harry the Horse Barbecue. Pastrami or Pastrami, a New York deli classic that is commonly made with brisket. If you haven't seen my most recent pastrami video, I highly suggest checking that one out. But essentially pastrami is just a brisket that has been brined, steamed, smoked, and then sliced up and commonly served on rye bread with mustard or can be served up Reuben style. Now the process of pastrami is a basic one that can be utilized with a variety of proteins. So why don't we try this out with some beef cheeks? Similar enough to brisket, so they should yield an amazing result at the end of the day. So let me take you back about a week ago where I started this pastrami brine. Let's go. All right, y'all passed Harry here and we're gonna cook up our pastrami brine. So let's get it. This pastrami brine starts off with toasting our warming spices. Mustard seed, coriander seed, black peppercorns, allspice, and clove onto the heat to let these toast up a bit. Now that these spices are roasty, toasty, and smelling fragrant, we're gonna go in with water. About two quarts to start. The whole idea behind toasting your spices is to release their oils, which will add a complex flavor and a nice depth of flavor to this pastrami brine. Next, red chili flakes, some cinnamon sticks, some star anise pods, a couple of bay leaves, a handful of garlic, our kosher salt, our pink curing salt, and our brown sugar. Now back onto the heat to bring this up to a simmer. That'll help dissolve all the salts and sugars and then we'll cool down this brine. Now we can't make pastrami beef cheeks without beef cheeks, so we gotta go shopping for some beef cheeks. Let's go. Beef cheeks. Now I picked up these beef cheeks from my local butcher called Marble Meat Shop. I'm pretty much a regular over there now and they know me by name. So they hooked your boy up with four trimmed up beef cheeks. So enough horsing around, let's get these out of the pack and into the brine. Ugh, these beef cheeks are looking really good. Barbecue tub, brine is going in. In with the rest of our water about a gallon of water total and some ice to cool it down. Once this brine reaches about 50 or 60 degrees, we'll throw our beef cheeks in. Our pastrami brine solution is chilled down to about 65 degrees or so. So in goes our beef cheeks. Two and our other two. I don't plan on cooking these beef cheeks for about a week. Since they're a small cut of meat, I think they can sit in this brine for about a week and absorb pretty much as much of the brine as they're possibly going to. And at this point, these beef cheeks are done and ready for the fridge. It goes on and I'll see y'all in about a week. And after being in the pastrami brine for about 10 days, these beef cheeks are all ready to go. And I tell you what, these beef cheeks are looking really nice. The color has gotten darker, which means it's absorbed all of that pastrami brine and the beef cheeks are a lot firmer. All I did was take these beef cheeks out of the brine, rinsed them off, gave them a pat down, and now they're ready for our seasoning. So let's season up these bad mamma jammas. We're gonna hit these beef cheeks with a classic pastrami seasoning to build an amazing crust on the outside. So we're going with this container. In this container, I've got one part 16 mesh black pepper, one part ground coriander, a half a part of granulated garlic, and a half a part of granulated onion. Now I haven't seen pastrami beef cheeks many places, but I did see Leroy and Lewis do this. So shout out Leroy and Lewis for the inspiration, but it's just a great cut to pastrami because it's so similar to brisket. It's gonna take on all that pastrami flavor in a fraction of the time a brisket would. And these will hopefully cook up at a fraction of the time that a brisket would. Pat that in, give them a flip around and back at it. Wanna build that heavy crust on the outside, all that beautiful coriander and black pepper. Those classic pastrami flavors are really gonna come through on this new take on pastrami. These beef cheeks are all pastramied, seasoned up, and they're ready for the cooker. So let's go fire up the cooker. Definitely gonna need two chimneys for this one. Hopefully these double charcoal chimneys help out with those beef cheeks. Now 
not bad. All right, y'all, the cooker is rocking above 200 degrees, which is amazing because this wood is really wet. I'm hoping that the temps can get out about 250 degrees to start these beef cheeks out. Remember, those beef cheeks have a lot of water and brine in them, so they're gonna take a long time to sweat out that moisture. So the sooner we get these on, the better. So enough horsing around, let's go grab those beef cheeks and get them on the cooker. Let's go. Pastrami beef cheeks coming up for y'all. This one's gonna hit different and I'm super pumped for it. Let's get them on the cooker. Up and under. Okay. I've gotten a lot better at doing it one-handed. What? All right, beef cheeks going right on the cooker. All right, I've got the beef cheeks on the center of the cooker because I want them a little bit closer to the heat source because I know they need to evaporate and sweat out a lot of that moisture. I've got the damper to the smokestack wide open because the wood is wet enough and smoky enough that the beef cheeks will pick up plenty of smoke flavor. I've got a water pan on the water pan shelf and we're ideally running this fire at about 250 degrees. The sun is peeking out and I cannot wait for some of these pastrami beef cheeks. But all that's left to do is close it down. Boom, shaka, laka, yeah. Hmm, I'm really gonna have to slow smoke and cone feed these beef cheeks so they're not as tough as a shoe. Shoe, 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 shoe rhymes with blue. What's that? You see a blue? Where? There's our blue. Nothing says pastrami like a crisp cold Canadian pilsner. Been craving pastrami, especially in beef cheek form. Gonna be amazing. All right, y'all, we're at about the three hour mark on these beef cheeks. And surprisingly, I've been able to run this fire between 250 and 260, which is amazing. Let's take a look at these cheeks. The sun is peeking through at a pretty good time, but you could see these cheeks are looking pretty barky. They're looking pretty dry on top. That bark is starting to set. They're feeling really firm and a little weirdly sticky on the bottom. That's it on these beef cheeks for now. I'll bring you all back to check on these beef cheeks once they have barked up even more, have taken on as much smoke flavor as possible, and they're ready for a cone fee bath. But until that moment comes, let's close it down. Boom. Nine hours later and our beef cheeks are all barked up, but they're still hard as a rock. I know one thing that'll help us out here. Wagyu beef tallow. These little cheeks are going for a confit bath. We'll confit these until they are nice and tender and sliceable. Our beef cheeks are ready. And if you're wondering why my board is a mess, I tried to film that slide of the tray and hit the counter and beef tallow went everywhere. And I can't lie to y'all. Once these beef cheeks were nice and barky, I put them in this beef tallow bath, finished them off in the oven until they were probing nice and tender, let them cool down till they hit about 150 internal temp. Then I gave them an overnight rest in this tallow bath. Time got away from me and I had to chill these down for a couple of days, but just to reheat them, I threw them in my oven at about 200 50 degrees and they came back to life no problem so let's take these beef cheeks out and see what they're looking like that beef cheek ain't looking too shabby let's slice into these beef cheeks well right now you might be thinking mr horse didn't you start off with four beef cheeks well after i rested these overnight the next morning i was super hungry so i made me a beef cheek pastrami and egg sandwich it was pretty good Oh yeah, look at that beef cheek. It is just pastrami'd all the way through. My only thing is I'm hoping these aren't too salty, but let's find out. They slice really nice, looking real good on that slice. Mmm, wow, that's insanely good. Ooh, I ain't mad at that at all. Ooh, gotta love a good pastrami. And pastrami beef cheeks, it's next level. Really tiny beef cheek burnt in. Mmm, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that pastrami beef cheek right along that fat seam, bite through. No problems with tenderness here. Gosh, that's good. My one knock, it's a tad on the salty side. If you guys make this at home, I suggest cutting back the salt by say about 20 to 50 grams or so. Because the beef cheeks are smaller, you can oversalt them pretty easily. If I wanted to, it'll break apart nice and easy. It is just, ooh, over with these beef cheeks. But I tell you what, these beef cheeks are not horsing around. These pastrami beef cheeks are so good, I just can't stop. Hello. At this rate, I'm gonna have to try pastramiing everything. 
Mm -hmm. It's so tender. It's got all of those warming spices in there coming through perfectly. Still retains a lot of that beefiness and that beef cheek integrity. Beautiful crust on the outside, soaked in all that beef tallow. Hold your horses. Pastrami beef cheeks are delicious. Oh yeah. Beef cheeks still retain all of that super beefy flavor like a brisket. They brine in literally half the time and the cook time is not nearly as long. If you like pastrami brisket, then you'll definitely enjoy some pastrami beef cheeks. Look how sticky. This pastrami's got me calling for my mommy because I'm in a food coma. I'm gonna go sleep this one off and dream about some cheeky lyrics. Whoa, I'm gonna have to pinch my cheeks to see if I'm dreaming. Get it? Cool! Is this brisket or beef cheeks? Just let it brown for a week. It tastes so good I can't speak. Make sure to use this technique. Flavors that will make you shriek. Cook up a beef cheek or three. In this stream I feel crazy. Hit that sub button for me. Beef cheeks were pushed on me. Tender, juicy, and barky. Brisket, there is no need. Deliciousness is guaranteed. Thank you all for tuning in to Harry the Horse Barbecue. I really appreciate you checking out this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I made some amazing beef cheek pastrami for y'all. Plus a sub really helps me out. You know we got that crispy bark on the outside of these beef cheeks. So go ahead and leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below if you've pastrami beef cheeks before and let me know what I should pastrami next. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we're posting new content. And you can follow me on Instagram at Harry the Horse Barbecue. Tag me so I can see what y'all are cooking because it really inspires me to get outside and cook for y'all. And with that being said, there's only one more thing, y'all. This one is going straight to the horse's mouth. We'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.